I'm going to read you all an article from the April 2004 issue of New Type USA magazine. It comes from an article with an interview of Michihisa Abe, the president of JC Staff. It's true that Japanese anime is receiving a lot of attention right now, and people who don't even know anything about anime will come up to me and say how anime is so cool, but I still think we're in a crisis period, observes Abe. Human resources aren't being developed. That's the biggest thing. I guess it's no wonder, with so many more shows coming out and the schedules being tight everywhere. He cites the art of key animation as an example. Unless you've thoroughly mastered in betweening, you're not going to know the trade, and that's why everything gets sent overseas now. So even when it comes to the animators themselves, it's really hard for companies to create the kind of environment where they can learn the trade. Our company's the same. He draws a parallel with other industries, where Japanese products end up being produced in China and Korea. If we're not careful with animation, it could go the same way for us. Matsukura believes the industry is in a bubble period. That's Yuji Matsukura, a producer for the studio. There's a huge number of works, a perpetual shortage of staff, low-quality works, and all sorts of problems, but the bubble is going to break someday soon. The people with real skills will remain, and the people who aren't really doing anything that stands out will be weeded out. In a little while, the industry will be scrubbed clean and refreshed. Then, progress will be able to find a path once again. Right now, there isn't any progress because it's such a confusing situation, like a simmering pot. Currently, he says, Bishoujo, pretty girl genre, is driving the market in terms of sales. Since anime is commercial, people have to make works aimed that way. Therefore, I do feel that there's a danger that the real interesting stuff isn't going to be brought to the front. So I try to be careful in the works I do. He's concerned about both the creators and the viewers of anime. The level of the Japanese audience is really sinking. Their ability to understand the stories and the way they look at the images. In the industry, in the staff, there are two widely different opinions, Matsukura continues, and brings up the differences between French films and Hollywood films as a comparison. On one side, he explains, there are the art film creators. They call it the art of anime. There are certainly people who do their work taking pride in the fact that they are artists, but those types of people definitely aren't paying attention to the audience. On the other side of the spectrum, he remarks that there are creators who focus solely on the presentation to appeal to the audience. The problem is the chasm that exists between the two. It's fine for there to be people who can make it art, but that attitude can't be mainstream. Above all, it's entertainment for the audience, and it should be fun. That's the way to make it commercial. He believes it's unhealthy to simply categorize works such as Kokaku Kidotai, Ghost in the Shell, as wonderful anime, while looking down on Bishoujo anime as cheesy. You can make even Bishoujo anime interesting. I want shows like Kokaku to stop saying things that are hard to understand and make shows that everyone can enjoy a bit more. There should be a wider variety, agrees animator Takashi Wada. When Evangelion first came out on TV and I watched it, I thought this is what anime has to be. It needs to go that far. I felt there was a danger that viewers would start demanding it, that if it didn't move at least that much, it wouldn't be considered animation. Of course, the last half of the show didn't move, however. He says there's a place in the market for all kinds of anime, whether it has a low cell count, heavy dialogue, or non-stop action. Even if they keep getting more specialized, I think that's good, as long as they are interesting. Asked about the future of the studio, Abe responds, Right now, JC Staff is a production company. That's what we are. And after 10 years, I'd like us to still be a production company. That's the first thing. He stresses that unless the quality of works is maintained, the studio won't amount to anything. And that's exactly why we need to train our people. He muses that in a decade, the art form may have evolved to an exclusively 3D format, and the studio could well be involved in overseas co-productions, but I just don't know. Basically, it's something I have to take a closer look at to understand. One thing's for sure, he would like to continue pursuing works originated in-house, like Daphne and the Brilliant Blue. For the staff, it's like having a goal of our own, and it's encouraging. I think I'd like to put out a whole lot of them in the future.